Well, thank you for joining us for this week's AccuWeather podcast, Everything Under the Sun. I'm your host, meteorologist Regina Miller. I'm joined in the studio, as always, by my producer, Andy Robb. And already, oh my gosh, summer's over. We're in fall. We're talking about the winter outlook. And Paul Pastelock is in the house. I'm normally really happy to see you, Paul. He's our long-range forecaster. But I got to say, I'm like depressed because we're talking about winter already. Well, let me tell you, you're late to the party. I've been getting hit since July. It seems like it gets earlier and earlier and earlier. And I keep telling everyone, I may not know as much... You know, that back then and yeah. <laughs> as I do right now. I mean, things have been difficult uh, for this winter forecast this Well, year. you're like the Christmas decorations, you know what I mean? Because, mm-hmm. like, pretty much as soon as the 4th of July goes down, I notice that some of the stores already have Christmas trees up. So yeah, we just <laughs> put, we just put our Halloween We just put our Halloween decorations out yesterday. Well, that's good. You're appropriate. <laughs> you're appropriate. That's when you're supposed to do it. So tell me about this year's winter forecast. Mm-hmm. Like, what components are you looking at for this, first off? Before we even get into components— I have to say, I've been doing the long-range stuff for over eight years now. This is the hardest winter forecast that I've had to put together. Really? Uh, There is mixed signals across the board right now. Everyone is pushing cold, 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 and stormy, and I get it. I see the signals. We're pushing stormy big time this year. We've already seen one big storm already. I know. Uh, This weekend, uh, Montana. Exactly. But things are just not working to the exact way we're seeing here in September and even the forecast for October, it's kind of thrown us off a little bit. We're going to probably see an overall mild fall, which could translate to a colder winter. We've seen that kind of happen in the past. And the things that we're looking at is the Pacific Ocean very carefully, the northern Northeast Pacific Ocean, because we've seen that as being a big driver so far this past decade, as far as cold and snow Mm -hmm. in the wintertime season. But at the same time, we got a weak signal out of ENSO, El Nino and La Nina. Mm -hmm. It's in a neutral phase, which means that the southern jet stream and the northern jet stream, which one's going to be the more dominant jet stream this year? The north brings the cold, the south brings the moisture. Are they going to be in phase? Are they, you know, are they going to be just outdoing each other? Oh, so because if it was a more clear signal, like, you know, it's it's harder when you're trying to deal with like subtle nuances. Exactly. And then there's, there's all these little things also that get thrown in, stuff that's going on in the Western Pacific Indian Ocean right now that's kind of having an effect on the fall season, why it's been so warm in the Tennessee Valley in the south uh, has had influence. And is that going to stick around and kind of mess up any cold and stormy pattern in the eastern U.S.? So these are the things that are really kind of biting at us right now, trying to dig into what our original forecast has been. Um, but we're still going with a, a stormy pattern, whether it's rain, snow, or ice in the east. We're still going uh, for a very active pattern this year. We're not quite sure exactly on the cold in the east how severe it's going to be. If you lay down the snow early, then it'll be cold. But we think that the areas to watch, which has been similar in recent, the northern plains, Midwest, and the northern Rockies. I mean, these areas uh, are already getting hit. Mm-hmm. And we feel that that's an area that could get hit with some severe cold, especially getting into midseason. So this week, for example, as we're doing this podcast, when you have like a jet stream where mm-hmm. the western side of it is so unusually cold and it's so warm in the east because this week, you know, we're talking record breaking yeah. temperatures mm-hmm. for parts of the mid Atlantic and, and everything. So like I would look at that and Just because I concentrate more, you're on the long range all the time. I'm looking more at the shorter term. So I would look at that and be like, oh, are we going to be lucky enough to have some warmer weather in the eastern half of the country? You know, but it doesn't translate that way. You know, you're looking at an amp. That's what you call an amplified pattern. Okay, the pattern's amplified. And what could help that is the water temperatures are running once again warm. Remember the, the term the blob? If you remember the blob. Are you talking about the movie? No, not the movie. Fact, <laughs> From the 19, it. what, 60s or something? <laughs> but, well, it could act like that. Uh, but the blob was a, a body of warm water uh, uh, that uh, developed. It was the a period between 2013 and 2015 developed in the Northeast Pacific. It was a big driver to the polar jet stream. It forced the polar jet to go way up into Alaska, pull down cold air from even on the other side of the, of the globe, straight down through Canada into the U.S. And we had severe cold and severe storms in eastern New England, Boston, the Midwest, everyone getting hit hard. That has developed again. There is a warm blob that has developed in that area. But I went back and I saw the differences of when those water temperatures warmed and when they cooled, and they made dramatic differences in the January-February forecast. I'll give you an example. 2013-14, that warm blob developed as the winter went on. Okay, so it wasn't there at the onset. It wasn't on the onset, but as the winter went on, and it got stronger. 
meaning the pattern got really amplified in the middle of the winter. And that's when we had severe sto- severe snow in the Midwest, cold coming down through the plains. Because it shoves nasty. the jet stream further to the east. Mm-hmm. Say so instead of yes. you having maybe storms coming in Idaho, it's West pushing east. it exactly. maybe farther into like the Dakotas or exactly. something. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. We have a more amplified pattern farther east, more north to south. Okay. Okay. More north to south is going to bring you more cold because it's going to come over from the other side of the pole. Right. Then you get into 2016, 17. There was a lot of stories out there in the early fall. The blob has returned. The blob has returned. I thought I was listening to the blob, the real blob. And then all of a sudden, after they wrote those articles, the warm water faded in the Northeast Pacific. Oh. You know what ended up happening in January, February? What? Everywhere east of the Mississippi River was above normal, in some places well above normal. Oh. It just flipped the other way. So two different things happening with the timing of that blob and how it's sustained into the winter can make a big difference. And so we're watching it right now. It has faded a little bit because there's been a lot of storminess coming into Western Mm -hmm. Canada and Alaska. So if it comes back, I think that's the main driver of this forecast. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is a tough one. So hedging your bets right now, Mm -hmm. what are we looking at? I think the Northwest is milder and less snow, less active than it should be. I mean, they're still going to get some snow and rain. That's the but Northwest. it's going to happen. It's the winter. It's just going to it's just going to happen less. I think there. Okay. I think that uh, it, there'll be some warming in the, in December, early winter in the northern plains. I'm, I'm not talking like warm. I'm just talking that it's, it's not going to be that cold. The Arctic air is kind of holding back a little bit. But by the end of December into mid season, I think there's going to be charges of cold because it's going to get very stormy on the East Coast mm-hmm. and places like D.C., Philadelphia. They're on the border. They could see a lot of changeover systems there. Oh, I hate those. Those are so hard to forecast in the short I know. term. I know. And, and forecasting snow for those places this far out in advance is so difficult because it only takes one storm to get them to normal, two storms to get them above normal. Okay. And so it's very difficult. Snow forecasting is far out, but we think they're on the border. But New York City and Boston, they may get into these backdoor cold front things, setting the cold and the storms coming right into them. They could have so that loaded normal. gun scenario. Yeah, they could have above normal snow fall there. But okay. again, if everything shifts just a little bit farther west, all the cold keeps dumping too far west into the Rockies, like we kind of saw last year, everything shifts and it just warms up and it's there's not as much snow on the East Coast. Okay. So, this so it's going to be fighting. a real subtle east to west dividing line. Kind of dividing line yeah. that we're trying to figure out. We, it's, it's just a tough call right now. I mean, we, we don't want to get into the trap of what happened last year, everything shifting a little too far to the west and, 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 and not getting as much snow in the southeast. They got their snow early on mm-hmm. um, in December, if you recall. But, uh, you know, that's a tough call. Uh, and again, we probably won't know more until November because the forecast models, they've been awful. Oh, okay. They've been all over the place. Yeah, they can't get a handle on it either. Right. Like you said, when you've got those kind of nuances, there's nothing to grab a hold of and be like, oh, this is the thing. This is the year. This is the this one is year the you want to follow. Yep. I don't have that this year. Right. I really don't. Right. I am leaning this. And, and you know, believe it or not, 2013, 14, it wasn't even in my set of analog packages, the years that I look at to match up. Okay. It wasn't even in the set. Oh, and that's what you're kind of using as and your... And now I'm looking at uh, it, and yeah. I'm like, oh, this is looking better and better now, looking yeah. at what's happening now. So, I mean, that's why we're, we're still evolving. We're still changing here in the long-range department. So I think that as we get towards... I don't even think October's model is going to be that great. So we get to November, I think we'll have a clear cut. I know it's getting late in the season, but hey, some years you just got to... You just got to hang on and wait, you know? Right. There's little clues will reveal themselves here as as we go through maybe the next month. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think it's going to get... Uh, there's been some drought that's formed also in the Tennessee Valley. Mm-hmm. I think they'll get some wetness here in late fall and early winter to help them out uh, as the jet stream gets a little bit more active. So that's good news there. Yeah, because um, their pat- the pattern's been farther west there with the yeah. heavier rain, uh, places like Iowa and um, northern Illinois exactly. here recently. Exactly. And some Everything's of those getting places. stuck over Right. There, it's getting know? stuck over them. And then the snow, the ski season, I, it's looking really good in the west right now to start off. And then I think the east comes into play after that. So okay. if you're a skier... Yeah, you you can do this. Mm-hmm. Travel west, then come back east. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I think you're going to get uh, some good stuff there. Okay, now uh, southwest, south central, southeast. Let's kind of maybe just take a look at those areas. Yeah, southwest. I think early on, this is not uncommon. They they usually have kind of two seasons of winter. They have it early in the fall. Then it kind of breaks off a little bit, and then it comes back again late in the season. I think early on it does look rough. I think the interior Four Corners region, they should see some mountain snow and and, uh, desert rain there. Uh, I do think that's good news in in one respect. 
Uh, the other thing, too, is those storms may cut up. There could be some severe weather in November, early December in parts of the Plain States oh, okay. with those kind of systems. And then maybe some severe weather in the southeast as we head into January and February, which is becoming more and more common uh, we've seen in this past decade. Why do you think? Uh, just extremes. Stream, mm-hmm. you know, the water temperatures are running warm in the mm-hmm. Gulf of Mexico and the southwest Atlantic. You can get uh, dew points to come up and these big systems charging southward with the amplification we talked about. Right. It doesn't take much. Right. So the bottom line here, Paul. Well, the bottom line is is the we do feel with confidence it's going to be active in the eastern U.S. Snow, rain, ice, whatever, I do feel it's going to be confident. Less snow probably in D.C., Philadelphia on south, more in the north. Getting back to the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, I think they're going to be in a good position for a while to get some active weather above normal snowfall, places like Cleveland, Indianapolis, Cincinnati, and Detroit. Getting to west of Chicago, they get some storms, but it may not be as uh, as far as the amounts go, may not be there, but they can get the cold. Mid-season, January into February, it could get quite cold there. So heating bills are going to be going up in that part of the country. The south's kind of back and forth, temperature and precip, dry periods, wet periods, cool, you know, they'll see it all, I think, in the south. Southwest is active early on, some big systems coming in, uh, mountain snows, good skiing conditions, dry, uh, a little wet in the deserts. The northwest, less severity on the storms come in the fronts, uh, less frequency as well. So they'll have probably below normal precip. Not dry, but, you know, they'll see some rain, they'll see some mountain snow. But temperatures should be elevated, should be up, just like they are. they have been off and on from the summer into the autumn. Okay. So with with some of the question marks that still lie in the beginning of the, uh, you know, we're, we're not close to the season, not that close to the season yet, but we're going to be checking back in to maybe get some specific snow amounts the next time we check in with you. Yeah, our confidence level will be higher as we get into November, especially when we get more forecast models. Maybe we'll start to improve by then. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. We'll meet back here then, then. Paul. Okay. So we'll have Paul back in here when we get just a little closer to the season for maybe some specific snowfall amounts that we'll be looking at. Yeah, I know fall is just starting, so I know a lot of people aren't thinking about snow I as I never want to think about snow. No. Never want to think about it. I mean, it's, I like it. It's pretty as long as I can stay inside and have hot chocolate and, you know, like watch like catch up on movies or something. There you go. And of course, you can check out AccuWeather's uh, winter forecast right now on AccuWeather.com. Right. And next week we go from snow to talking about fire. Yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, fires, wildfires, current and also historic Wildfires. We're going to be talking about the Great Peshtigo Fire, and we're going to be joined by our very own meteorologist and, and firefighter. That's right, Jeff Cornish. He's going to be joining us. Check back in with us next week. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe to AccuWeather's Everything Under the Sun, giving you the stories behind the weather and so much more. New episodes every Thursday. Just search for AccuWeather on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or visit AccuWeather.com slash podcast.